ladies and gentlemen, before we go to the next step, it is now time to clean off your pool. Clean off your working area of your palette. Because we're going to want, uh, for the flowers, we're going to want nice, clean, uncontaminated colors. So go ahead and clean off your palette. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, for a little while now, we're going to go to a smaller brush. And this is a Robert Simmons Series 42 size 6. And it's a brush that I've used on several paintings. So now it has a certain amount of wear associated with it. There are times when you want to use a used brush, and this is one of them. So I want to call attention to this photo and we have a very very white water lily blossom with a very faint yellow center that's what we see here we have a, a white blossom with a yellow center but there's a little hint of pink on the underside here where we have a hint of kind of a purpley gray underneath which is the shadow of a white flower so let's let's do a little experimenting here first I'm going to take some white and what is a really good natural gray a really good natural gray is white burnt sienna blue and a little touch of the cool red phthalo red rose so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this little bit of, of a gray here and I'm going to put that on the underside right there. It's a little bit dark. I'm going to have to lighten that up slightly. So I'm going to lighten this up just a little bit. And I'm going to put a little bit more of that cool red with it. All right. So now we're going to put, there we go. There's the underside. And I'm going to put a touch of this in the water. Right there. All right. Now, that white flower, I'm going to take the white flower. And what I'm going to do, instead of using the yellow, I'm going to use just a touch of orange. And orange is the color of the sun. And we're going to make that white flower just a little bit orange. And we're going to put a little suggestion of that color in the water. And now if we want, we're going to take just ever such a slight hint of yellow well that looks pretty good now if we have that right there what do you say we put another white flower a little further back This one we're probably not going to worry about the the pink or the um, the yellow center. I'm going to take a now take a little bit of this cool red, and we probably want a red blossom here. So we're going to take and do a kind of a red blossom right here. And we'll put a little reflection underneath it. And now we'll lighten it up. So we have a little bit lighter right there. You may have to put a little bit of design in there so we clean there.
So there's a couple of water lilies. Now we have this real pale pink one water lily and it's probably nice to have one right there. And when you do that, put a reflection in the water. Here's another one. Little reflection. Maybe get a few white ones, a little bit more white. That one got a little bit big. I have to cut that one down in size just slightly. I think it would be nice to have a yellow one out here. Let's get a little bit of a yellowish one right up here towards the foreground. And for the shadow underneath, I'm just going to go with raw sienna underneath. Well, I didn't get it with that brush stroke. There we go. And... Maybe a little bit lighter up on top. Okay. Let's go with another red one over here. And I'm going to put a little bit of darkness underneath this one. Like that. Now we need some purple. Uh, let's see. Before I do that, I'm going to put a couple of... of um, different... Uh, some lighter color... water lilies there and when we do that we should have on some of them a little suggestion of a shadow so I'm going to put a little suggestion of a shadow under a few of these All right. I looking pretty good now what we're going to do is we're going to go for a purple. Now there are some marvelous tube colors of purple. And if one of the viewers, if the viewers wanted to use those tube color purples, that would be perfectly fine. I'm just going to use white with phthalo red rose and blue. And I'm going to come up with a purple. And we'll get, we'll put a number of these in here first. That are going to be a little bit on the darker side. Now these are somewhat of a spike. They're a little bit of a spike.
So we put some darker ones in first. Now I'm going to take some white and warm them up a little bit, lighten them up a little bit. And we'll put a few lighter ones in. Well, they're not quite light enough yet. So we'll lighten it up a little bit more. There we go. We might even go over the top of some of these that we've already put in here. I don't know what the, the kind of plant this is, but it's definitely a bluish purple. So I'm going to get some of these. Load my brush and get a little bit more blue here. Now, as we do this, we're going to want to make a couple of subtle notes in the water of some of these blues. A few little notes in the water. Okay. I think I'm going to put a little white blossom. All right, okay, do thou likewise. I was going to put a little bit more blue right in there. Okay, again, on, on coming up with the purple, I used white, phthalo red rose, and the blue, cobalt blue. And these, are, these flowers on this plant are definitely a bluish purple. So I don't know the species of plant. I just know that it's obvious in the picture, photograph, that they are a bluish purple. And there was a bunch of them. When we were out on location, when I had the workshop out on this at the Perry Water Garden, uh, these things were definitely in bloom. So I'm going to restate some of that darker edge of my water right here. And I think we got that about as nice as we're going to have it. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the last thing to do on this painting is put in what we call the frame within the frame. And the frame within the frame is a visual obstacle that we look over to get into the painting. In this case, the light source is coming from somewhat of the upper right. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to put it down in this area. And I might bring it out a little bit further but I'm going to get a, a little bit of a nice dark dark down in this area that we have to look over to get into the picture now I'm also besides having the dark I'm going to have a little bit of a light in here a nice green And we want this to be an earthy green, so we'll get a little raw sienna with it. So we'll have some of the, the light green with it also. Okay. And now what we want to do is we want to kind of work with this a little bit. So we get the feeling of uh, 
like not necessarily cattails, you know, the weed called cattail. But I want you to watch. I'm going to use, this is one of the small brushes that I'm going to use. And it's actually a watercolor brush. You can see it here. I'll put it against this white background. And this is a Raphael um, K-A-E-R-E-L-L -L, trademark synthetic um, fluid paint number four uh, it's a n size four and it's a number 869 it's just a watercolor brush any watercolor brush would probably you know any port in a storm will do <laughs> well this is kind of a port in a storm so it's just a little watercolor brush that I'm going to now you saw how I, I suggested those those uh, I just kind of scribbled that stuff in there a little bit. And so what we're doing here is we're putting a little bit of, uh, we're putting some real detail in here without working too hard. My brush is hitting this shelf and I end up getting more pressure on my brush than I really want to have on the brush. But because it gets that fulcrum or that, that leverage from falling or hitting that, that shelf, I get a little bit more pressure on the brush than I really wanted. So I'm going to use the watercolor brush, and I also want to call attention to the sharpened end. I've stuck this in a pencil sharpener and sharpened the end of this brush, and then at some point you can come in even with that the sharpened end of it and you can suggest and this is a device that was used often by by some of the the old masters they'd they scratch through the old dutchman i studied under one time he said uh, uh the dutchman i studied under at on a number of occasions he he said any any detail that you can't see from 10 feet away has no business being in your painting so some of these details that i'm putting in here now really are 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 overkill so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to clean off my brush and i'm just going to go in and just kind of uh de-emphasize some of these big these larger spots that i got in here i'm using that number six brush now so I'm going to kind of go back and very carefully take some of the strength out of some of those spots that are a little bit too strong, mainly on the outer extremities. And kind of, I can get, you know, the old, the old saying, you can get more detail with a big brush than you can with a small one. And that's something that I'm doing here. Uh, that's pretty good. Okay, so there we have, we need a little bit more dark right in this area right here. We're going to get that a little bit darker. Okay. So we're putting the frame within the frame here. And when I put this shelf on this this um, easel, I built this easel. I didn't realize it at the time, but this shelf is just a little bit, it protrudes a little bit more than, than I really needed. Okay, so... We have that, and now really the last thing we have to do is our signature. So happy painting, good luck, and I hope you enjoyed this lesson.